So yeah, a couple of people are coming still, but I will start now. So thanks for coming to my talk today. Uh, so my name is Tahsin. Uh, I work for uh, Wayfair, uh, but uh, with uh, in our Berlin office. Uh, so today I'm like uh, coming from uh, Berlin uh, to join you all. Um, I work for the engineering manager of the uh, Android team in Berlin. Uh, today we are going to talk about. Um, come on. Okay. Ooh, my keyboard is not even working. Hmm. Okay, yeah. So today we are uh, going to talk about code review. So according to Wikipedia, code review is a software quality assurance activity. No, just kidding. Uh, yeah. So like, I'm not going to go into details of what is code review and like how to do it. Uh, basically, so the the details are not going to be here. So I'm assuming that you have uh, already like practiced code review in the past and like basically we are gonna uh, look into how to make it more effective. So uh, I would like to structure it in, in two aspects. So first of all, uh, uh, code review is essentially is about giving and receiving feedback, right? So we will talk about like how to make this uh, feedback mechanism uh, more effective and essentially providing a safe safe place to to work uh, for everybody. So like uh, when things go wrong uh, with code reviews, it could uh, it could be the reverse effect. But if 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 it, if it is done effectively, it can like uh, lift people's spirits, provides like uh, psychological safety. So like you have a creative uh, environment where you don't really afraid of making mistakes and like even fighting imposter syndrome and like uh, feeling comfortable included basically. So first of all, I will start with a big bad example, which I have done also in my uh, past career. So I couldn't really fit this into the slides very well, but here we go. So this is, uh, yeah, sorry for the language as well, but it's, it, it really describes what we shouldn't do. So like not, not with this language, but I have done something in, similar in, my, in, in the past in my career. So uh, like to, I will just give the example. So we were working on this story where like we were gonna uh, display a push notification to the user. And uh, like when you get the push notification from, uh, from backend, basically we need to do another network call uh, to get more details. So this is like a classic problem. It's in the past. It, this was like just when the dose mode in Android was introduced. So before dose mode, it was like really not a problem. You, it's like YOLO. You just do the network request. You don't care really the user's device battery at all. But now, like at that point, Android started to block your like random network calls in the background, right? So this uh, pull request was not really handling the edge cases. It was like only handling. Uh, the successful request where it would the cause was like really missing push notifications, but it was also like really hard to test. So my feedback to this was not super good. Like it made the other people put in a defensive situation. So this was like a huge argument. And then, uh, yeah, it didn't work basically. Uh, it was a super failure for me as well. It was a frustrating moment for everybody. And like I learned this. Uh, in a hard way, and it was like a learning moment, and it, it's always in my in in my mind is something that I never forget. So it's really like uh, this kind of situations where we want to avoid because like if you don't have the uh, this environment uh, in your team where you have a safe safe place where you can like this have the psychological safety, it's not gonna uh, be good at the end. So this is the first part, and the other one is the shipping software, right? Uh, so we are here, like we are developers, and we want to shift software. But then oftentimes we have this uh, blocker comments on uh, on our PRs, right? Maybe they are right, but it's also annoying sometimes that I don't know how many of you had 
uh, like miss miss the release train because of uh, like block uh, blocking commands on your uh, PRs, but I don't like it so much. So at the end, uh, we also need to ship software. If you don't have any quality assurance, then you, you can of course uh, uh, can ship even faster, but then that will hit you back later. So all this talk is gonna be like uh, finding finding a balance between two, two these two edge cases, basically. So, and, and the rest of the talk will be split in two. Uh, one, like we will look in the perspective of the code reviewer, and, the, and then later and the, uh, with the perspective of the code author, basically. And here is a gift that I uh, thought it would be appropriate. So one is the code reviewer and one is the, the author. Um, yeah, so let's get more serious now. <laughs> So uh, from this point on, I would like you to put yourself into maybe a situation where you were starting a code review, right? You open the pull request page, uh, find something to review, or maybe a colleague of yours asked uh, for your review. So you are starting it anyways, like you looked at the code, uh, you look over the code, and finally you find some, you find some bug, right? So that's the moment you f should feel uh, like uh, really, work is done there, you find the, find the bug and you can now walk away, uh, then it's the other person's job to fix it, right? No, just kidding. So this is, <laughs> this is not the way it should be. So it's, it's really, like now we will see like how much attention that you should put uh, into the commits uh, uh, reviews and it's, it's never like uh, finding something and walking away. So this magical, uh, four letters, LGTM, is, is usually like uh, putting that there is not enough. Yeah, so before going into the details, I would like to set some principles. First of all, come on, yeah. So first of all, review when you have a chance. Uh, so this could be like really keep this in mind and imagine like before lunch or between meetings, you have that half an hour, so that's where you can find some time to review code and that will help your colleagues. So this is a principle that I like the most. It's like really contradictory to the Boy Scout rule that we show, we, we see earlier. Um, it's really like people are really attached to the idea where you always want to uh, fix everything. But really like, uh, if you think about the end goal, like think about the shipping software and like having this balance, it's really, if it is, it is better than before, why not merging it? So no need to, no need to block in, in such cases. So even there, for example, if it is appropriate, if you think it's really important to, to fix some part, you, it's also, there are other options. So you can uh, create a follow-up ticket. Of course, here you have to be honest, like if you, uh, create that ticket and it's like dumped into the backlog dumpster, nobody is gonna look, then it's not a solution of course, but I think you can find uh, the sweet spot where like uh, found this culture where you really can do this and like uh, address this follow-ups in a timely manner. So this is like really providing an effective way to go forward. And maybe something that people miss all the time is, is really making a full review. Uh, imagine a case where you review and like just the example I gave, you review, you put a command and go away. Maybe you have a sudden meeting or something, like I don't know. And then like the, the person addresses your comments, the other side, and then you look at it and put even more comments, right? This is not what we want. So this back and forth is really unnecessary. So if you start the review, you should really finish it to the end. So now we are going into the actual review. We uh, picked up the pull request maybe, and then starting the review. You, you look over the code, and then I, I kind of categorized the comments you can put in like uh, three types. You may ask questions, you may have suggestions, and of course the last one we will get into it also appreciation, saying, saying like nice things, which is oftentimes is, is missed. So let's look at the questions first. 
So first of all, don't ask vague questions. So this is really, sorry. This is really important. People actually sometimes do this intentionally, sometimes to test the other person's knowledge. Sometimes like they think they can uh, hold their question and uh, do follow up questions um, after the answer and so on and so forth. Like this is really not necessary. So don't ask great questions and also don't hold your questions. Be direct and upfront. This works the best, especially in written communication because you don't know when the person is gonna answer. Maybe it's like in half an hour, maybe it's in next day. Depends, it's next day is of course not the best, but can happen, so don't hold. So yeah, the, the biggest part is the suggestions, which is where most of the problems come from. Um, yeah, so first of all, like state your suggestion, right, is easy, but also give reasoning behind it. So just, just stating it like this is bad, this can be simpler, not good, like when you, while you are thinking about it, you probably have reasons in your mind, so indicate those. Also while doing this, like don't give comments, this is really bad, it shouldn't get personal. Um, yeah, so also the next thing is that you are thinking about the suggestion, but maybe you are not sure all the time, like giving reasons also may not be easy all the time, that's also perfectly fine. So also mention that, so maybe you are suggesting something, but you also have open questions, so state it, don't hold yourself. It's the, yeah. And last thing, you give even your reasoning, but also again, like you are talking about it, you have all the like context in your mind, you are probably thinking about also like some alternatives. If, if you had that in mind, also, don't hold yourself, uh, even put some alternatives. So this is, may seem like a lot of work, but it saves and provides like overall uh, team productivity. Right. So we will now go into some examples. So like the first one is of course the bad one. Uh, you can say this code is bad, it can be even true, but don't do this. Right? <laughs> yeah, so like you, you may explain it, like or, or like be more explanatory, don't call this method here. Maybe you really shouldn't call that there, but it's still not good. So maybe you like with, with an explanation, uh, so you explain why this is bad, maybe cause like calling that there uh, will throw an exception, but we will also follow up with, with the reasoning uh, because dot, dot, dot. So let's go there. So the why part, which is like really the important one. So for lots of people, uh, it might be obvious, but it's usually not. So don't do this as well. It's also not gonna be obvious to, to you like one week from now. So it's never the, the answer. So really give, the, um, give a good explanation why you think it's the case. Then I would like to, uh, yeah, you put your you put your comment right before before um, commenting that. I would like you to read your comment one more time, really quick. If, maybe sometimes even after putting it there, make sure that your message is clear. So if it is just a question, maybe put it there. Put the question mark emoji. Or if it is nitpicking, it really say nitpicking there to make it it's obvious that because sometimes in written communication it might sound like more serious than than you think. So emojis do do a great job here. So if it is like a really important thing, you could use like warning signs, uh, stuff like that. Uh, but really like uh, go over and make sure that your message is clear. So let's look at some examples where we give some alternatives after like in, in, in your comments, right? So the, the biggest discussions uh, come uh, in naming variables. It's really hard. Uh, one of the hardest things in software development. Also caching is, is another one. 
so really, this is like a super good example. As I mentioned, as I already told before, like you think maybe the naming here is not good, right? You didn't understand it, but like while doing that, you read the code, you kind of now understand what it is doing. You could re you could uh, suggest some names there, right? It's really easy for you, and it saves a lot of time uh, on the other side. Uh, maybe it's let, let's look at a bigger comment. Maybe it's like really you there's a piece of code there. It's okay, but you think maybe it's too too much coupled with the with the with the place that it, it is it is in inside. So you want maybe them to move that class outside. It's can be possible, but while again thinking about this, maybe you already know where to move it. So state it there. Sometimes it not it's not easy. These are just examples. So when it is not easy. Also state that, and this is where like inviting co for collaboration is like the biggest, uh, like the, like yeah, good ag advice in my mind. I think I, I found this like really really effective myself. Uh, so sometimes you are not sure. There might be a situation also like you are not sure you didn't state that right, and the other person like spends hours and hours also even a day and then they get back to you and say like, this is not possible, right? This is also a, a situation where maybe you didn't even spend that much time in the code review and you just said like, this can be simpler and the other person may, may be spending lots of time. So like, if you are not sure really, one solution is to do, do collaboration, work together and see what else can be, can be better. So now like these were, these were like the, the comments that you may put in the com uh, in in a pull request, you reviewed it, uh, maybe to the end, but your job is not done. It's I know. Uh, so it's the end of review, which is also where you can do lots of things. So first of all, finishing up re your review, there is this really awesome feature that was introduced like last year or so at GitHub, and GitLab took it as well. So it's like submitting review in batch. So this is like optional, but it's really effective. So you, you commit, you comment, and then you don't really submit in one go, uh, but then you submit them in batch. Of course, then it, it, it introduces the possibility that you maybe left the room suddenly, but you forgot. Uh, it happened to me sometimes that I saw my like un, unsubmitted comments there. Yeah, like pros and cons, but it's really good. It allows you to like review your own review in, in batch, like when you submit. So this is really useful. Uh, for example, one example that what you can use is that maybe if it is, especially when you put like too many comments, be careful with that because it might be overwhelming on the other side. Maybe if that's the case, remove like less important comments, especially if it is if they are like really opinionated, uh, not that important. You could do this to to make it easier. So we talk about like the type of comments, right? If you have like a really mix of them, uh, summarize them. Like you could you could go ahead and say like thanks for doing this, uh, and I have some questions. Uh, please like uh, take a look if you have time. But really, this this comment is the important one. I think we should address this. Uh, yeah, stuff like that, right? Uh, you could even put a link to that particular comment. And lastly, it's the most important one, actually. Make sure to that you, you said at least one nice thing. So it's, it's, a, it's a culture like, cultural thing where we are trying to improve something. It's about quality assurance, and it's always about improving stuff. And it, it may sound like always uh, criticizing the code, right? So, but you really can find at least one thing nice to say, and this is really important. I found this tweet <coughs> while researching for my presentation, and I think it's it was really good. So yeah, I will give some examples. 
on, on such comments. So you may see, say like, hey, this is really well organized, congratulations. Like, thanks for covering edge cases. So maybe while reviewing in the inline, you found something interesting, good job thinking about this one. So one of my favorites, uh, like especially on the removed code. Um, and again, like the same as the previous ones before, right? If you cannot find something, that's not an excuse. You can always find something. So for example, maybe it is like something that was not done for a long time. So you can say that I'm glad uh, somebody is taking care of this, right? Or else maybe they, you can even uh, praise an entire file, which is like the test is the biggest example. So maybe um, they, they edit test for some file, right? You can thank for, thank, you be thankful for like those tests basically. So I am sure that you will find uh, at least one nice thing um, in every, every pull request. Mm, yeah, so uh, next one is emojis. I already talked about this, but it's really uh, important, especially when it comes down to communicating, it, commu communicating your message clearly. So electronic communication is really, really hard to capture your tone. We all know that by now. And that's why like this code review culture is based on emojis and GIFs um, a lot, which is really nice. So like it really uh, allows you to capture the message and even if it is a sarcasm, sarcasm or, or stuff like that. So it's it, it puts the human part of it. So whether it's like a clapping, having an eye on, like celebrating, Right, or, or you didn't see, see that and you have the monkey face, uh, it's also fine. So another one is like the GIFs. These are the ones that I took from our code base. So like the um, bottom right is like finally somebody took care of this. Like the others are like being shocked and celebrating. It's like really good. So from the code review side, code reviewer part, uh, the last one uh, I would like to focus is uh, criticizing. Um, <laughs> yeah, so let's see why we shouldn't really criticize strongly. So before going into details, I would like to uh, put some time on this code from uh, Norm Kert, it's from the uh, retrospective uh, prime directive. Um, so this is mostly like retrospective, you know, in Scrum, it's like um, going back and <clears throat> looking back uh, what you have done as a team uh, in a sprint or so, but like it's also the same for code review. So like really we should assume that everybody did their, their job, um, uh, they code in a given time their skills and abilities and the resources available and the situation at hand. So, uh, first of all, like when it comes to criticizing, uh, it also sometimes go personal. This is really bad, like we have seen some examples, but I would like to focus, it, focus that here one more time because it's really important. So, it really should be about the code itself. Uh, it should never be personal. So for example, um, wait, I will get to the examples in a minute. Yeah, so I think one, one uh, effective way I, I found is like really good is to always uh, remember, remember what you are trying to achieve. Like the first two things that I uh, mentioned. So we want to make sure that we found a, a really good team culture. Uh, it's a positive one and also we want to ship software. So like if you go personal, you cannot achieve uh, either of two. Uh, and what you can do is basically the constructive feedback. So let's have, let's look at some examples. All right, first one goes like this. This cannot be merged because you always forgot the right tests, right? It's first of all personal, maybe this is true. 
maybe you got you in a team you have a rule where like things has to be tested, right? Yeah, but this is not the way to to mention it. But let's look at another version which is slightly better, but um, I still don't like it because let's go. For example, this new class is great, but cannot be merged since you didn't write any tests. So this I would like you to focus on the word but here. Uh, so it's I I believe like with this kind of comments is the first but part is really not honest. Uh, when you have but there, it's like really removes the first word completely. You shouldn't even write that. Um, but like uh, let's let's have a look another version, right? So this new class is great for encapsulating the logic. So you give also the reasoning here, which is like really great. And how do you think we can test it, right? So it, this this kind of question, open question, uh, style of feedback uh, gives the other person to think about it immediately how to test. So they will go like, oh no, I forgot to write the tests and like immediately start doing that. But if you go the other way around, it will put them in a defensive uh, position, right? Yeah, so this is all um, the best practices that I have come up with for the reviewer part. Now we will go into uh, the code author part, which is shorter, yeah. Actually, I will be even more quick to have some time for questions and answers. Um, yeah, so imagine yourself, you write the code, right? So this is the part actually we enjoy the most, uh, working on the code, uh, especially you, you take a ticket, you worked on it, and you think your job is done, actually not. So you have to really put this effort in the code review to also like uh, to make this whole thing more effective. So before submitting your code, uh, review yourself. So you may find typos, uh, maybe accidentally committed code, it happens to the best. Uh, wrong formatting and forgetting, forgotten to do. So these two things are really, uh, shouldn't go there. I, I, I have a really nice trick here. So I, um, Android Studio, basically IntelliJ have this like commit, commit dialogue. Not much people use it, people prefer comment line, but it's really good because uh, it automatically formats the code the only the changed ones and if you have new to do's in the in the changed code it also warns you about those so it's really good uh, i would really recommend using it um yeah so this is like a, a quote from like programming co programmers old article from uncle bob uh so I, I really like this sentence because like now what I'm going to talk about is, is really regarding this because like, uh, you know, like I, you, you got the ticket, you are working on it, but you really should make sure that uh, anybody can and, and cover that. Basically the pull request is where you want to merge your, merge your code and you would like to uh, po possibly like explain it more there, prepare it so that it's obvious and uh, obvious what they what you did, and and possibly somebody could could take take care uh, after you. So like in in some companies that I I have seen like people would people would go for vacation, and for two weeks, and then when they come back, their their pull request would be open still, but. If you have a really better job there, any colleague of yours can pick it up and continue and why not ship it? And probably you have lots of conflicts if you haven't merged something in weeks, it's really not good. But how do we do this, right? So you probably have spent a lot of time writing it. Yeah, you have been living uh, with it for a long time. You have the best context on what this piece of change does. Right, new code or changes, you have the best knowledge. So you really should document there in the full request. So when they are reviewing your code, it's, it's, as you can see right now, it's not a super easy job. It also requires a context switch. So they are getting familiar, like the code reviewer are getting familiar 
uh, with your code, etc. So like this kind of context there, it really uh, helps them to understand. So this can be done by good descriptions. Uh, really one-liner descriptions, which is like the commit message, which doesn't have any much, any information at all, is like a really good practice to be, because a really common practice, not good. Uh, because GitHub is doing that by default. Uh, you really shouldn't do that. You should provide a good description. And you may use like GitHub templates, uh, pull request templates to make this a common practice in your team. And by Good description, what else I mean? You should really describe like what and why you are doing this. What are you doing first of all with this, this request and, and why you took some, some decisions, right? And one thing that not is, that is not that common is the steps to test this, especially maybe it is a big refactoring or so. You don't expect a behavior change, but you touched a couple of pieces. So like you can explain those in detail and come up with a test plan even. Okay, Google. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the next one is the screenshots. It's really useful. Uh, the picture means like thousand words. Um, it, it really like, especially if it's a UI change, uh, it's, really, it's really good. And the, the last one is labels, really important as well. One example is like you are working on a release blocker bug maybe. As a team, you may want to have like a, a label um, saying like release blocker or whatever. So it also provides visibility in the list of pull requests. Also you could filter and stuff like that. Like not just release blocker, of course, like uh, really finding the best labels that is working for your team. Uh, is really helpful, but then you have to make sure that you put them there, right? So you may think like this is a lot of work, but remember uh, these are like read by everybody, not just reviewers. Also, maybe in the in the future, I don't know if you have done this at all, but like sometimes I would go to the commits and uh, find the like to understand why something was done in a certain way I would put I would get the commit message com commit and then uh, really easily find which which uh, pull request was doing this like including this commit and then uh, probably uh, like find reasonings and why this was done in a certain way there right so it helps everybody and for that like no information should be hidden. Also, like again, like since you are already working on the on the code, you may already have like previous links, previous pull requests, like Jira tickets or any ticketing system that you use, or like bug reporting links if it is a link. Just put them there for future reference. It's really really useful. Yeah. So like the next one that I pull from the same article is uh, about productivity, but not about your productivity. It's team's productivity. It's really important. Uh, people usually misses that, uh, really like focus on their job, their, uh, you take the task, you, you, if, you, if you focus too much on finishing that task, you may maybe be hurting the overall team productivity. So like this is really being respectful to each other, and um, and working together as a team is gonna get you a higher higher speed at the end. So in order to do this, like you want to keep things small in your MR, or yeah, uh, yeah. So this is not so easy actually keeping small. You have to think about this from the beginning and constantly because. It's not easy. It's not things like you are in the in the coding like zone, and then you may end up with thousands and thousand lines of changes very very easily. So this is something you have to plan early, plan your work, like split it in logical pieces, and uh, also uh, along the way, if things got unexpected or change, uh, make sure make sure to uh, handle that and split 
uh, your work as much as possible. So when you have a smaller pull request, basically it's just because it's small, it's like much easier to review. You will have a quicker feedback. Uh, it will be, of course, like less context switches for everybody. It's, it's really good. Uh, and essentially, since just because it's small, you have less, you have, you will have less conflict issues. Right? And this all comes down to single responsibility principle as well. This is something that we all talk about during the code. Uh, it's a good practice, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but also for pull requests, it's really important. So if you have like, if you are changing like five different things at a time also fixing this bug, also doing this all together, since be just because you are just added and you felt yourself that you can just fix this as well, right? Sometimes it's not good. Maybe you are just fixing that, but overall you are hurting uh, team's productivity. So it's really single responsibility principle applies here too. You would want to keep your uh, changes focused. So one last thing about, um, last part about like uh, authors is to how to deal with comments. So this is the whole process, you got your review and uh, last thing is like how, how do you react to them, right? So first of all, uh, you have to remember that this is a team culture that you have to set but mistakes should be okay, right? So you don't, you shouldn't be afraid of making mistakes. Uh, so, Written form, written communication is hard, as I mentioned, but it, it may feel like personal, but assume the best intention and never take things personally. Always try to answer the comments, don't uh, make them hanging in there, even if it is like a thumbs up emoji or whatever, like do that. If the discussions are getting too long, it's also your responsibility to take them offline, like work together uh, with the code reviewer, and uh, if you have a solution, also maybe summarize it back to the pull request still, because that, that will be important for the team. Um, yeah, also like if it is getting too overwhelmed, if it is also okay to ask for like follow-ups, making some uh, of the comments optional, right? Lastly, I uh, would like to really, really briefly talk about automation tools, not much. Uh, because uh, Nate gave a talk yesterday. If you haven't attended it, watch it later, it is, it's great. So again, in the whole process, if computers can do it, you don't have to do it. So yeah, that's all. Unfortunately, don't have too much time for questions, but I can, I can answer a couple of one, maybe. So we are hiring as well. Go to wayfair.com slash careers. We are hiring both in Boston and Berlin, if you're up to apply. Thanks for listening. And I am, uh, yeah, go ahead with the questions now. If you have time, of course. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I will be outside if you have questions. Uh, uh, I would be happy to talk. We have actually just one minute for the next uh, break and the talk. So thanks for attending everybody. Have a nice rest of the conference. <laughs>